here we're going to prove a pretty classic result from number theory. And that says that the nth harmonic number is not an integer, unless n equals 1, of course. So let's recall that the nth harmonic number is the sum as m goes from 1 to n of 1 over m. In other words, it's a partial sum of the harmonic series. So that's equal to 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third, all the way up to 1 over n. So obviously, if n is equal to 1, then this thing just truncates at 1, and 1's an integer, so we're good to go in that case. But if n is bigger than or equal to 2, we're going to show that it's not an integer. Maybe before we do that, let's do a little bit of exploration. So let's look at h2. So notice that is 1 plus half. We can go ahead and write that as 3 halves, clearly not an integer. Let's look at h3. So that's going to be 1 plus half plus third. So we can use the fact that 1 plus half is 3 halves to write this as 3 halves plus 1 third. Notice our common denominator there is going to be 6. That'll be 9 over 6 plus 2 over 6. So that's going to be equal to 11 over 6. Let's maybe do two more. So h4, that's really going to be h3 plus 1 fourth. We can use this like cute little recursion on the harmonic numbers like that because h4 is going to be this and then plus a 1 over fourth. So notice that's going to be 11 over 6 plus 1 over 4. Here our common denominator is 12. So we've got 22 over 12 plus 3 over 12. So that's going to give us 25 over 12. I'd say maybe that's a good place to call it because the structure that we can see going on here is that after reducing all of these to lowest terms, which these kind of popped out in lowest terms, we seem to have something of the structure of an odd number over an even number. So maybe we can figure out a way to show that the nth harmonic number, as long as n is not equal to 1, written in lowest terms, is of the form an odd number over an even number. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, so let's get to it. So we just did some exploration and we saw that harmonic numbers seem to be of the form an odd number over an even number after we push them all together and put them in lowest terms. And so let's see if we can show that that is true in general. So the first thing that I want to do is consider the set of all of the denominators here. So here we've got 1 over 1, 1 over 2, all the way up to 1 over n. And what I want to do is take x, and so this x is going to be an integer, um, be the maximum such that 2 to the x is in our set of denominators. So 1, 2, um, 3, all the way up to n. Good. So the kind of motivation here is we're trying to somehow put all of these things together and then factor out all of the evenness. But how do you factor out all of the evenness? Well, you do that by looking for the largest power of two that you can find. So now we're gonna bring another integer into existence. So in particular, we wanna take y, which is an integer, such that um, n factorial equals two to the y times an odd number. So in other words, it's whatever it takes to factor as many twos as possible out of n factorial. So that's kind of the goal here. And now what we want to do is look at n factorial times h sub n. And so, well, we're going to look at n factorial times h sub n, but that's actually going to help us because in the end, we'll look at h sub n, this nth harmonic number, and then we'll multiply by n factorial over n factorial. That's just like multiplying by 1, so we're good to go there. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and write this n factorial as 2 to the y times some odd number. We don't really care what that odd number is. And then I'm going to take, take my harmonic number and split it into parts. So the first part that I'm going to split it into is going to be 1 plus 3rd plus 5th plus 7th and so on and so forth. So this is of the form 1 over an odd number. 
And so we know that we can like take all of the odd denominators here and then group them together. We've got a finite sum here, so we don't need to worry about any sort of rearrangement theorem that exists whenever we have an infinite sum. So now where is this gonna end? Well, I think that's pretty tricky to check, but I think we can write it like this. It's gonna be one over two times the floor of n minus one over two plus one. So notice if n is odd, this should finish at one over n, but that's exactly what happens. Notice if n is odd, n minus one is even, and so the floor of n minus one over two is just n minus one over two, multiply that by two, add one, and we've got n. So this works out, this is where this thing ends. Now we're gonna do a similar regrouping for all possible powers of two. So we're also going to have plus one half, and then we've got one plus third plus, so on and so forth. I'll leave it to you guys to figure out where this one is going to end. But suffice it to say, what we have here is all of the denominators that are even, but once we factor two out of them, they're odd. So in other words, they're like very slightly even if you want. Okay, now we can continue on. So this is gonna be plus one fourth, and then we have one plus one third all the way up. And so this is everything so that after you divide a four out of the denominator, you have an odd number in the denominator. So this is a little bit more even than the last case. But now we can keep going until we hit the largest power of x, which is in the set of these denominators. So that's gonna end this at one over two to the x. And then we factor that out of as much as we can. But in fact, what's as much as we can here? Well, it's just one. And so let's maybe talk our way through why we know that ends at one. Well, let's suppose for a second that it does not end at one. So we have a one plus a third here, and then it keeps going. But the fact that we have this plus one third, it means that one over three times two to the X is part of this harmonic number, but that goes further into the series than one over two times two to the x. In other words, one over two to the x plus one, but that contradicts the maximality of this value of x. So in other words, we can't have anything further than one after we factor out a one over two to the x. Okay, good. So the next thing that I wanna do <clears throat> is go ahead and take this guy and multiply it on to all of the rest of the terms. So in other words, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna multiply it here, I'm gonna multiply it here, and I'm gonna multiply it here and here. And let's see what we get for all of those. So notice this first one, well, all the denominators are gonna cancel because we're really multiplying by n factorial. And so, in fact, this odd number is going to cancel all of the denominators. So what we have is 2 to the y times some integer. I'm going to go ahead and call that integer m0. And maybe m0 because it corresponds to pulling out a 1 over 2 to the 0. Good. And then multiplying onto this next one, we're going to get 2 to the y minus 1, because we've got this 2 in the denominator, times m1, and that, that's also an integer. And then we're going to keep going, so we're going to have 1 plus 2 to the y minus 2 times m2, so that's the integer that we get from this part right here, all the way up until we get to 2 to the y minus x. And we don't multiply that by anything else because of our discussion before our like m value in that case is just one. So now we can go ahead and factor out the smallest power of two that's in any of these terms and that's gonna be uh, two to the y minus x. So let's see what we get after doing that. We can take, take out a two to the y minus x and then we're left with two to the x times m zero plus two to the x minus one times m one all the way up to, so let's see what this one's gonna be. This one's gonna be like two times m to the m sub x minus one. And then finally, we're going to have one, which is what we get after factoring the two out of this like very last term here. 
But now notice that all of this stuff in parentheses is odd. And that's because we've got this stuff right here, which is most definitely even plus one. So that makes that odd. So in other words, n factorial times this nth harmonic number is of the form two to the y minus x times some odd number. Okay, so let's maybe clean up the board to here and then we'll finish it off. Okay, so we just got done showing that n factorial times h sub n was of the form two to the y minus x times some odd number, where y and x were defined like this thing up here. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at what this nth harmonic number is based off of this. So this is gonna be equal to n factorial h n over n factorial like just by arithmetic. But now we can write that numerator as two to the y minus x times this orange box odd number. But then we discussed before, actually by the definition of y, we can write that denominator as two to the y times an odd number. But now we can do some straightforward simplification, maybe cancel these powers of two down. And what we're left with is this orange boxed odd number in the numerator. And in the denominator, we're gonna be left with two to the x times some other odd number. But now I wanna really, really quickly notice that x is most definitely bigger than or equal to one because we've chosen n bigger than or equal to two. So that means this fraction is of the form an odd number over an even number. But if you've got an odd number in the numerator and an even number in the denominator, well then that's impossible for this object to be an integer. And so that finishes this proof that h sub n, this harmonic number, is never an integer. And I want to point out that there's this high power theorem that allows for a much shorter proof, but the proof of that theorem is very difficult. So maybe I won't say the proof of that theorem. You guys can go on a wild goose chase to try to figure that out, or maybe post in the comments um, this other strategy that I'm alluding to. That's a good place to stop.